You might be one of thousands of people waiting for a Nexus card, and you can prepare to wait a little longer. A dispute between the Canada and between Canada and the U.S. has resulted in a backlog on applications. So what are they at odds over and what can be done? Well, for more on the legal perspective, we are joined this morning by immigration lawyer Chantelle Delange. Good morning to you. Welcome to your morning. Good morning. Thank you. So what are the U.S. and Canadian disagreements over when it comes to the Nexus program? I think everybody wants to be able to cross the border easier. Yeah, well, the problem is that when you apply for an access card or to renew it, there are two steps involved. The first step is the easy part. You just go online and you fill it up and they do a security check on you. But the second step is where you need to have an interview with both U.S. and Canadian border guards in the same location. So the problem is that uh, the Canadian side locations are all closed right now. Why are they closed? Because there's a dispute between Canada and the U.S. that the U.S. border guards would like to have their firearms with them, which they usually do in the U.S. They would like to have them on the Canadian side in the interview stations on the Canadian side of the border, and the Canadian border guards don't like that. So the dispute is that we don't want the U.S. guards armed on our side of the border. That's correct? Exactly right. And as a result, we have had our Canadian side interview locations closed since the spring of 2020. It was initially a COVID issue, but now, uh, now that COVID is sort of, you know, most of the restrictions are lifted, the issue is with the, this dispute between Canada and U.S. So the border is open, but the Nexus offices are closed. Got it. All right. So what legal precedent then do Canadian border authorities have to try and push the American side to adopt the same legal standards? How do we get past this bump in the road? Yeah, well, there is no legal precedent for it because we're dealing with two sovereign nations. Uh, so Canada has absolutely every right to dictate the conditions on which U.S. border guards can operate inside Canada. And likewise, the U.S. has every right to insist that they should do it under their conditions. <clears throat> so I, I think what they really need to do is sit down at the table and figure out some kind of a solution. I mean, why could these videos not be done uh, by video, for example? Why do they necessarily need to interview everyone? I mean, Canadians can still go down and book a slot for the interview and go to the U.S., but the problem is their their slots are so backlogged. And also, it's not easy for everyone in Canada to necessarily just jot down to the U.S. to do this interview for their Nexus card. And you bring up a great point there. That was the advice given to us is that because we're close to a border, we're an hour away, we can drive across. But you're right. That's not the option for most of Canada. Uh, what will Right. It's easy for us, but not so easy if you're living in Timmins, for example. Exactly. So what will change in the Nexus process if Canada and the U.S. can't come to an agreement on this? Well, I, I think a couple of solutions are possible. Uh, one thing that they are looking at right now is the possibility of doing some of these videos by, uh, or some of these interviews by video. Uh, that would be an excellent solution. They also, I think, need to relax the rules a little bit. If people have been using their Nexus cards successfully for many years with no infractions, it's not really necessary for them to have to go through this renewal process and a personal interview uh, every few years. Uh, really, they could give them a free pass allow them to kind of renew it automatically unless there's some reason not to. So I, I think, you know, other than them sitting down at the table and coming to a resolution, this is really the only thing that they could do right now. Chantel, remind us, what did we do before? <laughs> well, previously, um, they used to just simply not have their firearms. They they would ha have this. Uh, they would have them on both sides of the border. You'd have Canadian officer in the U.S. You'd have U.S. officers in Canada. They'd be together in the same office and just do the interviews, and it was never too much of a problem. But now it, it's become a hot button issue. And what do we know why? I really don't know why. Um, it, it could be the fact that uh, Canadian Border Services officers have for some time uh, wanted to bear firearms themselves. Mm. Uh, so it could be that they're using this as an issue to be able to get that right for themselves. So it would be equal treatment. But uh, honestly, it's hard to say why it came up just right now. Well, thanks for clarifying what is a large frustration for a lot of people as travel begins to pick up. Thanks for having for coming yes. back. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.